Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to do a book review on Mathematical Modeling and Computation in Finance by Oosterly and Grzalik. I apologize if I mispronounce uh, the author's names here. Uh, again, full disclosure, this book was provided by the author to be reviewed. Um, so we're going to dive on in here and tell you what I do and don't like about this book. So first off, who is this book for? This book, I think, is the perfect book for an introductory class to computational finance, mathematical finance, uh, quantitative finance. Um, again, more on the derivative side as well, more on the stock exchange side, more on the, the buy side, for example. Um, but it does a really good job at doing a really broad overview. So if you're going to have a master's degree program, so computational finance, you know, mathematical finance and all that, um, this is the sort of book I would use for that first kind of crash course here, right? So you're gonna dive in, you're kind of getting a high level view of everything. Um, you're starting to understand what you know different financial concepts are, how derivatives are used, different types of models we're gonna be using, what we're gonna be looking at. And of course, we're gonna be coding everything as well so we can kind of see and feel and explore different ideas here. And so I think this is a excellent book for that first semester of your kind of master's program in some sort of a computational finance degree here. Um, so what makes this book amazing, at least in my perspective here, is not necessarily the book itself, but all the things the book comes with. So the book itself is great. Um, the book also has exercises as a normal book and it has solutions to the odd numbers. If you're a professor and you're using the book for a teaching material, uh, you can email the authors and actually get the even solutions as well. So that's awesome. But the big piece here is that Grzalik, so again, I'm sorry if I mispronounce this, but uh, he has 14 videos, I believe, in total um, of an actual video series that goes along with the book. So for me, this is more like a class, right? It's more than a book. Uh, one, you have the book, as I mentioned, you have the exercises, you're gonna have some code, uh, both in MATLAB and Python. And then on top of that, you are also going to have an online video series where you can actually listen to the lectures. Um, so these are not just boring lectures, as you would kind of expect. I really like the lectures. So there's a lot of him discussing the ideas, the topics going through kind of presentations, like a, a lecture. But then also he goes through code and actually walks through some of the code, explaining how it works. And the biggest pro here, I think, which a lot of people don't appreciate, uh, is going to be the way that the code is written. So often I see people write code and they're trying to optimize execution time and they're trying to make it cute and fancy and trying to do it in as short as line, as short of lines of code as possible. Um, but the author does it very straightforward, so it's easy to follow the code and understand it. So again, if you have not done this before, it's easy to kind of follow. And then in these lectures that he's doing, he explains this, which makes it great. So those are the things I really like about the book. And a few other things specifically about this book that I like is going to be the graphics and the charts in the book. So often you have books that are written, they're kind of explaining ideas, and it's easier to understand this from looking at an actual chart. Uh, so finance in general, it's hard to explain a lot of times because it happens in dimensions above two. So typically it's three, four, five, six dimensions. Again, it's hard to plot anything above three. And so the book actually does 3D plots though, which I think are really excellent in the way that they line up the topics, they do the explanations and the charts themselves are in color. Um, they're more realistic charts as well. So they're not gonna be as pretty nice uh, academic data as you typically see. And so I think the charts as well as the way that it's executed, the way that it's put together in the book, the way that it goes with the explanations, uh, makes the book a lot more clear just because it has those enhanced graphics, which I know is kind of an odd thing to think about uh, in a textbook. And as I mentioned here, the structure of the book itself, I think is good for an introductory book. And the fact that it's going to cover some of the basics, it's gonna cover some intermediates and more some advanced things, but it's trying to just cover a wide variety of topics. Um, so just going through a lot of the chapters here, right? You're gonna start with like basics about stochastic processes, introduction to financial asset dynamics, and then you're gonna kind of segue through things like the Black-Scholes option pricing, of course, you know, volatility models, jump processes, um, the cost COS method for European option pricing, multidimensionality, change in measure, affine processes, stochastic volatility models, uh, Monte Carlo simulation, forward start options, stochastic local volatility models, uh, short rate models, interest rate derivatives and valuation adjustments, hybrid asset models, credit valuation adjustments, uh, advanced interest rate models and generalizations, and then finally he wraps up the book with cross-currency models. So 
he does an excellent job. I should say they do an excellent job. There's two authors here. Uh, they do an excellent job at actually covering a lot of that computational finance. Again, more on the derivative side here. We're looking at interest rate derivative products, uh, stocks. We're looking at Europeans, we're looking at volatility models. A lot of this is going to go into the computational finance side, but they do a fairly well job at covering a wide array of topics and things that a program should actually be covering. Okay, so what do I not like about the book, right? So it sounds great, it sounds wonderful, it's an amazing introductory book that covers a wide variety of topics, but for me at the same time, that's going to be somewhat of a con here, a negative aspect of this. So it's great for that first introductory book. I like that it's a class setting and it's all put together, uh, but mathematically, it's going to be lacking a lot of detailed, rigorous analysis, and that's not the purpose of the book. So while I'm saying this is a negative about the book, I just want people to be weary when you're going to buy the book. Um, this isn't going to be teaching you the nitty gritty details of, for example, I don't know, stochastic calculus and how you get to the solutions and why they're appropriate solutions. Uh, when you find that you can't find a solution to a problem, like how you define those. The book itself is going to be this wide covering book. Uh, but again, for me personally, I really like to dive deep on topics, very, very niche specific things. Um, again, there are specific books out there that will cover each topic more specifically uh, and in more depth and a greater, I don't know, process here of how to actually get to the solutions. Uh, the math in the book, well, again, all the formulas are correct that I've read and I look through. Uh, there's just a little bit hand wavy in the sense that it's going to be an introductory book. So this is how the book's actually designed. It's not necessarily wrong or incorrect. It's just that it's such at a high level, a lot of times you're going to be wanting more from the book. So I think it's excellent for that introductory book, but you're going to need to kind of layer on after that book as well. And for me, I was just kind of wanting a little bit more, I guess, mathematical meat, but I also understand at the same time, like it's supposed to be an introductory book. It's not supposed to be like, I don't know, a super advanced expertise book on one very, very specific topic. And of course you'd have a massive book, uh, more like John C. Hull's book again, um, again, you can cover a million topics, but then you still have to go out and buy very specific books to cover very specific topics. So for me, I like the book. It's kind of enjoyable to read through, but it, for me, it also leaves a lot of wonderings and like at loose ends, which students are going to have that feeling of. And I think for an academic program, that's a really good thing to have uh, because then you hopefully have other classes and textbooks lined up behind it uh, to kind of layer in the process of kind of those things that it's missing. Uh, the other piece too is that the examples in the book, while they are relevant to the book, I felt a lot of times they were a little bit too simplified or there wasn't enough information in the chapters to specifically answer the question um, for that exercise. So you'd have to go out and do a little bit more research, pull out a little bit more mathematics. Again, if the book's trying to cover at a very, very high level, that's awesome, that's great, that's an introductory book. But then some of the questions seem like you need to know other aspects that aren't necessarily tied in the book very well. So I think most of the questions were great. I had some good experiences doing you know, the exercises, but there were definitely some cases where it's like, I felt like the answer was just too simplified, uh, not enough explanation as well. Uh, even for the solutions, I think they should provide a little bit more detail to it. Um, but again, I understand the challenge of writing a textbook and balancing questions that are relevant and also making your readers think a little bit and do a little bit extra work. Um, you don't wanna just be able to go back in the chapter and find the answer, highlight it, and then write it down. So little pros, little cons here. You're definitely going to need some math to do this, which should be expected for any computational finance book. Um, but again, I think the questions could just be a little bit more fine-tuned, maybe a little bit more specific to the text uh, and the context of what the chapter is trying to cover. So overall for the book, I would give it a four out of five stars. So that's typically like a recommendation to buy. Uh, again, it depends who you are, your background and where you're coming from. If you're looking for a high level book, you're looking to kind of get your feet wet, kind of understand things a little bit better, but you're coming from the outside. Uh, I think this is an excellent book and I would definitely buy it. Um, if you think though that this book is going to make you a quant overnight, which many students are looking for that magical book, they just don't exist. Um, you're gonna need a bunch of textbooks and you know thousands and thousands of hours of studying to really get deep. But I think this book does an excellent job of kind of getting you in the door, kind of getting you excited about the topics, seeing some of the mathematics as well. And then hopefully it sparks an interest in you if you find it enjoyable and you go out and find something that's a little bit more rigorous towards one specific topic and you can kind of do your digging and kind of build your education from there. So. Overall, an enjoyable read. Uh, there were some points in it as well that I found just 
I don't know, more straightforward than their textbooks I'd seen. So I think that's actually a good thing for this book as well. It does give you a good overview and it does provide you more of a class setting with all of the lecture materials that are provided as well as the code. So anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time, peace.